Hello, hello. Welcome to part two of how my new IKEA PAX closet system has literally changed my life in my 400 square foot tiny cottage. A couple of weeks ago, you seemed to really enjoy my clothing storage video. And today we are tackling makeup. My desk slash vanity slash filming area is literally the first thing you see when you walk into my house. And it has been a huge, messy disaster. Truly, truly embarrassing. Not only that, but it's so disorganized, I really don't even know what makeup I have anymore. I tend to default to what's in front of me, what's comfortable, what's familiar, leaving much of my makeup unused, forgotten, and unloved. So today we are tackling makeup storage. We are gonna go through my entire makeup toolkit, do a little declutter, and we are gonna fit my entire makeup toolkit into my three IKEA PAX drawers. The ultimate goal is to really know what I have. Every couple of weeks, I'd like to go through my main storage, select some products, sort of a shop my stash, create an everyday makeup drawer that I keep close to my vanity so I can rotate my makeup, use and love all my makeup. I think I see a video series coming up with that. Anyway, we have a lot to get through, so let's get to it. It is a mid-September, early fall, rainy day. What better day than for Bosley and I to organize all of my makeup? This is what we are dealing with. I went through all my drawers, boxes, shelves, gathered all my makeup and organized them by category. And all of this has to fit in my three IKEA drawers. So here are my three IKEA drawers in my new IKEA PAX closet system. And I have already sort of pre-organized them. The top drawer will be eyeshadows. The middle drawer will be complexion products. Those are IKEA organizers that fit perfectly into the drawer. And the bottom drawer will be lipsticks. Let's do it. Middle drawer is going to be complexion products, starting with my foundations, tinted moisturizers, and skin tints. Keep in mind, I am 62 years old. My skin is really quite dry, and my foundation preferences are light to medium coverage, radiant, luminous finish. Anything too heavy coverage or too matte just makes my 62-year-old skin look older and drier. So let's get these put away. Now, I am not going to be ranking these, and I am not going to be doing super in-depth reviews. We have way too much to get through. This is more of a collection overview and just getting things put away. Starting with my Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Foundation. You know how much I absolutely adore Lisa Eldridge. I love her lipsticks. So I was so excited when she came out with a foundation last year, ordered it immediately. Unfortunately, I have found this to be a very tricky foundation to work with. It is super pigmented. That tiny, tiny little pump goes a really long way. Really, it's more of a full coverage foundation and there is no natural radiance to this foundation at all. I found it to just cling to dry patches and look very makeup-y. Last winter, I did include it in a favorites and fail as a fail. However, I have played with it a little bit more this summer when my skin isn't quite as dry. I find that if I add a little e.l.f. halo glow, it cuts the coverage and gives it a little bit of radiance. So this is not my favorite foundation. It is on the chopping block, but I have found a way to make it work. So I am gonna keep that for a little while. My goodness, I am not gonna have time to swatch all these. I really need to keep it to mini reviews. Next up, one of my favorite foundations, It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better Foundation Plus Skin Care. I have it in two shades, 22N Light Neutral, 32N Medium Neutral, Summer and Winter Color. 
This is just a really easy, highly blendable, very light to medium coverage, natural skin-like finish. Super easy, absolutely love it. In fact, I think I have repurchased my winter shade once, so that is a winner. Another foundation I very much enjoy, the number seven Lift and Illuminate Triple Action Serum Foundation. Very affordable, and that is a keeper. A foundation I haven't quite formed a final opinion on yet is the Kosas Revealer Skin Improving Foundation. Finding a shade was super tricky. I finally settled on 180. You know, I really need to play with this. I haven't been wearing foundation that much this summer. I am leaning more on tinted moisturizers, but come fall, I need to play with that and form some final opinions. One of my really solid foundations is the Sephora Best Skin Ever Foundation. This is just a great everyday basic foundation, light to medium coverage, natural skin-like, slightly radiant finish, very easy to blend, also very affordable. $20 at Sephora, frequently on sale. During their sales, they will have it for 30% off. I have it in my summer shade, 21P, my winter shade, 22.5N. Those are good ones. One of my favorite foundations, Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. Actually, it's my most expensive foundation. I used up a whole bottle about a year and a half ago, and I thought, I'm not going to repurchase it. It's too expensive. It's in the $60 price range, but I found I missed it, so I purchased it in a mini. I'm in the shade 3.75. This is just a really pretty special occasion foundation. I'm really happy to have it in a mini, and I love it. Another foundation I came very close to decluttering is the Catrice HD Liquid Coverage Foundation. It is a full coverage matte foundation and it is long wear. When I wear this alone, yes, it makes my skin look older and drier, but again, I recently found that if I mix it in with some e.l.f. Halo Glow, it cuts the coverage, adds some radiance, and I am going to keep that. And my last dedicated foundation is the Charlotte's Beautiful Skin Foundation. I absolutely love this foundation. Medium coverage, radiant glowy finish. Some people find it a little bit too glowy, but this is perfect for my super dry winter skin. I have a whole dedicated review video on this where I show the application. It is gorgeous. I will be using it up this winter. I absolutely love that foundation. On to tinted moisturizers. For sure, during the summer, I lean heavily on tinted moisturizers. And my most reached for tinted moisturizer this summer has been the Tarte Maracuja Tinted Hydrator. I have it in the shade 20 and Light Neutral. This is just so effortless. It applies like a dream. It has light medium coverage. It always looks natural. You know, I did a whole tinted moisturizer roundup and ranking video a couple of months ago. This did rank high, but it wasn't number one, but I will say it is my most reached for tinted moisturizer this summer. I will link that video below. Another tinted moisturizer that's just super solid and incredibly affordable is the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator. I have repurchased this a couple of times. Again, effortless, easy, always looks natural. I have it in the shade light medium. ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer, beautiful. I have it in the shade light eight neutral. Very easy, very affordable. I would say those are my top three most used tinted moisturizers this summer. Interestingly enough, when I did my tinted moisturizer ranking and review, this Bare Minerals was in my number one spot. Yes, it is incredibly beautiful. It is lightweight. It feels wonderful on the skin. It is a lightweight hydrating gel cream. However, I have found I just haven't reached for it as much as I thought. And the reason is, is because I have to mix a blend of vanilla and cashew. And you know, mixing a blend of two shades versus grabbing one that is ready to go, I just found I haven't used it as much as I thought. But if you can find a shade match in this, it really is a beautiful, beautiful tinted moisturizer. 
I have a feeling the shade Vanilla will work for me in the winter time, so I will probably get more use out of that. A tinted moisturizer that ranked pretty low when I did the ranking last winter is the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint. This is incredibly glowy, way too glowy for the summer when I am getting glowy enough from the heat and humidity. But I am anxious to try this this winter and see how it works on my super, super dry winter skin. So many people love that and I am anxious to give that a try this winter. One that I haven't talked about and I wasn't sure whether to include this in foundations or skin tints. But this coverage is really sheer to light. It's the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Skin Milk. I have it in the shade Fair Light. It's really another effortless, easy, natural, sheer to light coverage. I very much enjoy that. I guess I'm going to consider that more of a skin tint. And lastly is the newest to my collection. I purchased this when Keir Weiss recently had a sale. It's called the Beautiful Tint and it is absolutely elegantly luminous on the skin. Sheer to light coverage. There is something just magical about this. I think it's the mica. It's almost like the hourglass ambient lighting powders in a liquid formula. I am really, really enjoying this. Super, super beautiful. So those are the foundations and my tinted moisturizers and skin tints. One side note, even though these say they are tinted moisturizers, my skin is dry. I always find I have to use a dedicated moisturizer under all of these so-called tinted moisturizers. Complexion products done. Next up, we are going to do miscellaneous complexion products. Concealers, primers, liquid highlighters, and setting sprays. First up, concealers. I am not going to go through those one by one because I just did a dedicated concealer declutter where I did many reviews on all of my concealers. So those are some of my concealers. And I primers. You know, in general, I do not use primers. I find my skincare and my sunscreen to work quite effectively as a primer under foundation. But I did recently pick up a couple of primers. The Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base I picked up at an Ulta 21 Days of Beauty. It is a beautiful, luxurious, moisturizing primer. It almost feels just like a very rich, elegant moisturizer. And I did pick up the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. I don't know what I think about it yet. I need to play with that. So those are the only two primers that I currently have. Setting sprays. Again, setting sprays, not something I use on an everyday basis, but there are times during the hot, humid summer where these have really come in handy. Urban Decay All Nighter Classic Setting Spray. I think this is a mini. And the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. Fragrance-free and alcohol-free. And I recently discovered that the Urban Decay All Nighter, the second ingredient is denatured alcohol. So I am decluttering that. The Charlotte's Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray is the only setting spray I need. I do believe this is a mini. It is a really, really good setting spray. Liquid highlighters. You know how much I absolutely adore my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I've talked about it a million times. I have it in the shade 3 and it now comes in a mini, so there is the shade 2. I recently did a video where I compared the e.l.f. Halo Glow to the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I am not saying it's a dupe, but they are pretty close. However, I still prefer my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter as a highlighter, and I use the e.l.f. Halo Glow more as a primer and a foundation mixer. All good ones. I will link that video in the description box below. But they are all keepers. Again, I am a sucker for Lisa Eldridge. I did purchase her Elevated Glow in the shade Cosmic Rose. This is more of a pink toned, pretty similar to the Charlotte Tilbury. I need to play with that a little bit more. 
And lastly, the very, very affordable Burt's Bees The Luminizer Liquid Highlighter. I have it in the shade Starlight, which is sort of an opal pink. This is absolutely a gorgeous liquid highlighter. I did demonstrate that in a drugstore, get ready with me. I will link that video below. So that is my miscellaneous complexion products, concealers, liquid highlighters, primers. In this quadrant, we are going to put blushes. I have cream and powder blushes. I'm also including my powder highlighters in this category. And we are going to utilize this handy dandy little organizer that I got from Ruffer that's going to hold my powder blushes. I have two powder highlighters, Essence Pure Nude Highlighter in the shade Be My Highlight and Revlon Skin Lights in the shade Daybreak Glimmer. The Essence Pure Nude Highlighter is just elegantly luminous, gorgeous, never accentuates lines and wrinkles, super, super affordable. I will always have this in my collection. I absolutely love it. The Revlon Skin Lights, quite a bit more shimmery. I really don't use this as a highlighter on my cheekbones, for instance. It would really accentuate lines and wrinkles. But I do like to hang on to that because it can make a nice lid shade and it can make a nice inner corner highlighter. So I am going to hang on to both of these. The newest powder blush to my collection is the Sigma blush in the shade Tiger Lily. It is a radiant blush. The shade is super, super pretty. It's sort of a peachy pink gold very similar to the Milani Luminoso, which I gave to my Aunt Mary Jo, so I sort of miss it. Again, it is radiant, but not glittery. Super pretty. I'm having a lot of fun playing with that. A solid drugstore blush I absolutely love. L'Oreal Age Perfect Radiant Satin Blush in the shade Rosewood. That shade is just right up my alley and it has a nice radiance with no glitter or shimmer. Really pretty nude rose shade. Love that. The most affordable powder blushes in my collection, Essence the Blush. I have it in the shade Befitting and Beloved. Super, super silky, absolutely gorgeous on the skin definitely keeping these. I believe they're under $5. Love those. Probably the longest lasting powder blushes in my collection are these Tarte Amazonian Clay Powder Blushes. I have it in the shade Seduced and Parte. Seduced Parte. These are super long lasting, very blendable, very pigmented, gorgeous on the skin, absolutely love those and my most used blushes for sure hourglass ambient lighting blushes i have it in the shade mood exposure and the shade luminous flush you've seen me use these a million times these are absolutely gorgeous blendable radiant these are minis hourglass is very expensive but these minis take me a really long time to go through love minis. So those are all my powder blushes. Moving on to cream and liquid blushes, starting with my Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Blush Trio. These are minis and I am so glad I purchased a mini because these are incredibly pigmented. A tiny bit goes a super long way. I did do a video demonstrating these. It would take me absolutely forever to go for a full size so I'm really glad I have the mini. My most used cream blush has to be the Milani Cheek Kiss. I have it in the shade Nude Kiss and I have it in the shade Blushing Berry. Nude Kiss, Blushing Berry. Super easy to work with, very pigmented, very blendable, really solid, affordable, love those. Honest Beauty Cream Blush in the shade Peony. Now this blush is a little bit stiffer and a little bit trickier to blend than the Milani, but I absolutely adore that peachy pink shade. 
super brightening, so I'm absolutely keeping this. Fenty Beauty Cheeks Out Cream Blush in the shade Summertime Wine. Gorgeous, love it. And the newest cream blush to my collection is the Cure Weiss Cream Blush in the shade Blossoming. Again, I purchased it when Cure Weiss had a sale. I just love that shade. I've been wearing it most of the summer. Absolutely love it. It comes in these refillable, recyclable cardboard containers. You can buy the refills. Really beautiful, absolutely love it. Another blush I really love is the Merit Beauty Cream Blush in the shade Raspberry Beret. Once again, I did a video demonstrating this blush. It is just so easy. I love the color. I love the name. I enjoy the packaging. Definitely a keeper. This is going to be an unpopular opinion. This is the e.l.f. Putty blush that everybody loves, and I loved it when I first got it as well. But I just find this to be really stiff and really patchy and really difficult to blend. They don't have the shade names on the package, so I do not know what shade this is. I am decluttering this, I just don't enjoy using it, and I don't like the way it looks on my skin. Now, I have been hearing about the new e.l.f. Luminous Putty Blush. I took a look at that at the drugstore, and I could literally see glitter in the package. So that's a no for me. This e.l.f. Putty Blush, unpopular opinion, I am decluttering it. The very first cream blush I purchased several years ago is this Wet n Wild Mega Glow Makeup Stick in the shade Floral Majority. I did enjoy this, but it is old, the packaging is falling apart, and I just don't reach for it over some of my other more favorite cream blushes, so this is being decluttered. Two more blushes I am decluttering, the Flower Beauty Blush Bombs. Again, these were some of the first cream blushes that I purchased. I really just don't enjoy this squeezy applicator. It's really hard to get the right amount. I just don't reach for these over the other blushes that I enjoy more. And actually, I sort of had to blend these two colors together to get a color that I enjoyed. So I am decluttering these. A cream blush I am not decluttering is the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Enlivening Blush. She doesn't have it available on her website right now. This came out about a year ago. I think it's because she had problems with the packaging. I know Kiki had her package burst open at the seam there. And I think the reason is it is a pretty thick formula to try to squeeze out of that tiny tube, but it is such a beautiful, blendable, and I absolutely love that shade, pink soap, so that is definitely a keeper. I hope she comes out with these again and fixes the packaging problem because it really, really is a beautiful cream blush. So that is it for blushes, powder blushes, cream blushes, and liquid blushes. In this last quadrant, I'm going to put bronzers and finishing and setting powders, and we have quite a bit to get through. Starting with bronzers, an oldie but a goodie is the Physician Formula Butter Bronzer. I have it in the shade bronzer. You can see it is well used. It is a beautiful, silky, radiant formula. It does have that beach-like scent. I really do not enjoy the bulky packaging, but it is a classic and it is a good one. But I have to admit, since I purchased the Milani Silky Matte Bronzer in the shade Sunlight, I tend to reach for the Milani way more than the Physician's Formula. That's another affordable, good bronzer. And then my most recent bronzer purchase is the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Bronzer. Really beautiful, silky formula. It's another good one. My favorite powder bronzer, certainly my most expensive powder bronzer, 
is the bronzer that comes in the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow. It is just a perfect shade for me. It's not too warm. Absolutely love it. And I also very, very, very much enjoy that highlighter. Really, really pretty. A little bit pricey. This is a mini. And this mini is going to take me a long time to go through. But I have two cream bronzers, starting with Physicians Formula Sculpting Bronzer. Nice, blendable formula. Too dark and too warm. This is being decluttered. I recently picked up the Tarte Breezy Cream Bronzer in the shade Seychelles. And I think you can see it is a much cooler shade. This is way too warm. This is a little bit more cool, almost a little bit pinky. So I'm enjoying playing with this. I am very interested in picking up the new Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Cream Bronzer, but it is so expensive. And I am really hoping she comes out in a mini so I can play with that. So at this point, this Tarte Cream Bronzer is my only cream bronzer. Before we get to finishing powders, I have two face palettes to share with you. The first one is the Sephora Micro Smooth Face Palette. This is Sephora collection, very affordable, I think at $20. I purchased this during one of the Sephora sales when it was 30% off. The formula is beautiful. However, the bronzer is way too dark. The highlighter is way too shimmery. You know, these are pretty warm. This just doesn't work for me. It is a beautiful palette. I do have someone in mind who I think is going to very much enjoy this. So this is being decluttered. Another face palette I have to declutter is this Tarte face palette. Again, bronzer too dark, very, very chunky glittery highlighter. I'm just not having much luck with face palettes. This is being decluttered. Lastly, setting and finishing powders. Starting with the oldest in my collection, you can see how worn out the packaging is. It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better Airbrush Perfecting Powder. This is actually a tinted powder. You can see it is pretty tinted. You know, I tend to use this mostly in the summer over tinted SPF just to add a little bit more tint and take the glow down. You can see how well used it is. I'm going to finish it up this summer and once the summer is over, I will declutter it because it's a little bit too heavy for me to use during the winter. I think I've gotten my money's worth out of this one. One of my all time favorite finishing powders, Hourglass Ambient Lighting Finishing Powders. I swear these have magic dust in them. They just make the skin look so elegantly luminous and beautiful. I first purchased the minis, used the minis up, and purchased the full size. We have it in the shade Diffused Light and in the shade Dim Light. Now, they're mostly translucent. I really don't think I need both of them. If I had to choose, I would keep Diffuse Light, but I am keeping both of them. I tend to use the Dim Light a little bit more in the summer, Diffuse Light a little bit more in the winter, absolutely love these keepers for sure another beautiful powder a little more affordable than hourglass but still high end is the kosas cloud set powder i have it in the shade breezy mostly translucent but it does come in shades this is just a really easy to use powder takes the shine down leaves the glow sets the makeup never looks cakey absolutely love it on the more affordable side, I've been talking about this one quite a bit lately, Physician Formula Butter Believe It Powder. It is translucent, it is finely milled, it disappears into the skin, it is affordable. This has been giving my cloud set a run for its money. This is a good one. Don't love the bulky packaging, but it is a beautiful, affordable powder. Another relatively affordable powder is the number seven Lift and Luminate Powder. So many people love this. They say it's a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Powder. I've never tried the Charlotte Tilbury Powder, so I can't speak to that. 
They say it's translucent, but I bought the shade medium and it darkened my skin, so I purchased the shade light. It's a little bit too light for my skin. As much as people rave about this and love it, it just doesn't work for me. I do have a super fair skinned friend that I think might enjoy it, so this is being decluttered. Last two powders are both loose translucent setting powders. This is the Hourglass Veil and the Elf Halo Glow. They're both translucent and they're both loose. I actually used up previously an entire Hourglass Veil translucent loose setting powder. Absolutely loved it, so this is a repurchase. I have to say the Elf Halo Glow setting powder is a much more affordable alternative to the Hourglass. They are both beautiful on mature skin, never accentuate lines and wrinkles, give a beautiful, elegant glow. These are keepers. All right, powders, bronzers, blushes, miscellaneous foundations, complexion, drawer, done. Editing Tamara here. Even though I fully intended to share with you my entire makeup collection and storage in today's video, I just finished editing the complexion drawer and we are almost at 30 minutes. I definitely bit off more than I could chew in one video. So we are going to call today's video part one and my next video will be part two and we will go through eyeshadows and lipstick and I will show you the reveal of my made over vanity desk and filming area. It truly has been life changing. Anyway, thank you for hanging in there with me. I really appreciate your time. I hope you have a beautiful day and a wonderful week. And I really hope to see you in my next video, Makeup, Storage and Organization, Part Two. Thank you, bye.